JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 7th. I am Harald Lambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD. And I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But uh, before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against uh, the majority of the other currencies on Monday during the Asian session on Tuesday. It gained the most versus uh, JPY, CHF and NZD, while it lost ground only versus uh, the Aussie. The greenback was found uh, virtually unchanged against the British pound. Now, the strengthening of the Aussie and the weakening of the yen suggests that the financial markets may have traded in a risk-on fashion yesterday and today in Asia. However, the weakening of the Kiwi and the strengthening of the dollar point otherwise. Thus, in order to clear things up, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. There we see that major European indices traded in the green, helped by banks and commodity linked stocks, with the positive appetite, though softer, rolling into the US session. Some help to that may have been the 2% gains in Amazon after it, uh, split, after it split its uh, shares uh, uh, 24 1. Excuse me, and, and the 0.5% rise in Apple after the tech giant announced it would um, more, deep, more deeply integrate its, integrate its software into the core driving systems of uh, cars. Now, in Asia, today's sentiment softened even more with Hong Kong's Hang Seng and South Korea's KOSPI trading in the red. Now, for now, it is too early to arrive to save conclusions with regards to the forthcoming short-term direction in the broader sentiment, as we have a very important ECB meeting scheduled for Thursday and the US inflation numbers on Friday. The ECB is not expected to take any action, but with increasing expectations that officials uh, should hike more uh, aggressively than um, previously thought and due to high inflation, it will be interesting uh, to see what signals uh, we will get. As for the US inflation numbers, they could attract special attention, especially following the recent chatter around the pause in interest rate uh, hikes by the Fed after summer. Having said all that, we already had a major central bank deciding on interest rates today during the Asian morning, and this was the RBA. Against, against the consensus of a 25 basis points hike and some expectations over a, a 40 basis points hike, this bank decided to lift interest rates by 50 basis points to 0.85% noting that inflation is expected to increase further and that they will take further steps in normalizing monetary conditions. This was uh, pleasant news for uh, the US traders as uh, it added credence to the overly hoggish expectations around uh, this bank's future course of action. Remember that ahead of the meeting, according to the ASX 30-day interbank cash rate futures yield curve, market participants were pricing in nine quarter point hikes by the end of the year. All this suggests that uh, the Aussie could continue gaining even against the US dollar at least until we get the US inflation data on Friday as the outcome officially places the RBA next to the Fed and the Bank of Canada in terms of hoggishness. We expect the US dollar to trade uh, more cautiously until the US inflation data um, uh, data is out. However, we would prefer to exploit further gains against, uh, against the Japanese yen. After all, the Bank of Japan is, um, is the most dovish uh, major central bank. 
with Governor Kuroda saying uh, this morning that the bank's top priority is to support uh, the economy. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly market outlook. Excuse me to the weekly market outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at seven o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.